Hello everybody, it is your professor Rocco, you boy, coming at you once again for another Age of Sigmar video. In this AOS general class, I'm going to be responding to some viewer questions that you could you could see right right there. Yeah, um, I know. This green screen thing's nice. I need to figure out more things of what to do with the green screen, but right now for a second video with it, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Camera's there. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, like and subscribe if you like the channel and all the advice we've been giving out. And right now, I'm going to go and jump into viewer questions. This is specifically, I've had a lot of questions lately on Deepkin subfactions. So again, let's talk about it. Now, every army in the game now has subfactions. It usually has some flavorful name, like if it's Cities of Sigmar, it's the Cities. If it's the Night Haunt, it's the Processions. If it's Deepkin, they are the different enclaves. Now each enclave serves a very specific purpose and my questions that I've been fielding have been more in response to list building um, and how I would change lists, adapt lists, do, build for certain sub-factions and I'm very willing. I, I love the Deepkin so much, the Adeneth. I prefer the Deepkin, I don't know why. Because I, I, I'm a fan of tragic elves in in my fantasy. Uh, I love Tolkien's work. I love the Rings of Power. I love all the things that I know are going to happen because I've read too many books. Um, so it can't get spoiled for me. Though um, today I accidentally spoiled something for a friend by retweeting something. But you know, the, the source material has been out there for a while. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but focusing on the Deepkin with their tragic soul flaws... I'm going to just do these in alphabetical order here. Uh, the first one is uh, Briamdar. Hmm. In the future, I might have a slideshow where I'm in it like this, but yeah, it's a little messy right now. Briamdar is the Supreme Soul Scryer's ability. Again, this is just a nice chat here. These videos are more casual, and me talking to you like it's a one on one coaching session here. So their whole thing is, and I, I, the reason I'm looking down is I have my phone here, and I, I don't want to, you know, get it too close to the mic for feedback. But their whole thing is they let you deep strike extra units with the Soul Scryer hero, and it is, in my opinion, future proofing your list. If you're going to build around this, there is a reason you want to have almost none of your units on the table to start the game. I don't know what that is yet. I don't know what meta that looks like. Um, I, I could think of one example, Bellacor, right? Uh, his old rule used to be um, units in starting armies wouldn't be uh, would be able to be picked for his ability. I'm gonna check right now because I think when they changed it, they got rid of that clause. Or scrolls, Bellacor, be lacquer. Once per battle at the start of the enemy hero phase, you can pick one enemy unit on the battlefield. So yeah, that's not even in the game anymore. I don't know what the Briamdar, you null deploy your army basically. So you have like, the idea would be a build of like two or three of these soul scryers. Where for each soul scryer you can put three units in your army off the table. And Deepkin can run elite. You could probably have maybe a total of eight units, two of them being Soul Scryers. And then you you just show up wherever, which is okay, I guess. But you run into a problem where there there's a famous meme, uh, more f it's from 40K, where it was, uh, you could null deploy your whole army and the guy was like gonna go win a tournament and then, I've talked about this once in the channel. I'm going to forget again. I think it was uh, Crute Scouts um, were able to deploy in the op opponent's table side, right? So the idea was your the opponent was able to screen out where the guy that null deployed. And again, null deploying would be, to define it, having your army completely off the table so your opponent cannot counter deploy you. But anyway, the story goes... The guy completely had his army off the table, and then his opponent was able to move his troops in such a way that he could never get back on the table, and thus not play the game and automatically lose. 
which is why I don't think you'd ever fully do this because like if I'm going into like say Stormcast where they can deep strike anywhere on the table they just have to block out all the table edges because that's where this kind of deep striking comes from so I don't know it it's an answer to a question that hasn't been asked yet but that's how you build a router bring a couple extra soul scryers and you go you know and then we get two going in alphabetical order from my deep kin. Uh, Dom Hain with the Namardi Savages rule, which allows uh, after a unit has fought, it can try to charge an enemy unit if they're not in combat anymore. And this is for those Thrall builds. Uh, you'll see like a couple big units of like 20 or 30. When I'm playing deep kin, I like my infantry to be in groups of 20 at most because I feel like the 30 block becomes unwieldy. If you're playing with blocks of 30, whether Reavers, the, the Archers, or the Thralls, which are the, the, the melee variant, um, you're hoping that 5 to 10 of them get killed before you get to fight with them. Just so... Because if you're playing with actual terrain on your tables and your opponent is smart, it's going to be hard to get them all in. So the reason you'd bring 30 bodies is more so to absorb casualties. And then you'd want to bring in a couple of the... Uh, the Deepkin has have a couple of the healers, the um, the soul renders. They've got the anglerfish hat and the big old towel uh, cruel hook, which is like a cool bill hook looking thing. Um, I don't play this this is a redesign of the sub faction because i used to be a dom hain fool when they were about monster hunting but now this is a really good infantry melee spamming sub faction where you want to build around a bunch of different thrall units uh Again, you're always wanting to take an Achillean King if you can fit it, just because they're just an amazing melee piece. Um, but they don't really buff Thralls. Like, you could take a Turtle, but it's 500 points of your army, so you're you're weighing that against everything. You know, maybe you take Lotan. Maybe an Aspect of the Storm? I'm going to be... Look at this, because the Aspect of the Storm still gives out the Drenched with Hate, which is plus one to wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons to friendly deep can excluding mounts that are wholly within 12 inches of any unit with this ability and then it's just a big beat stick like i, I might take that instead of the turtle because at that point i'm trying to go and sell out all out for my my offensive output um i don't know specifically that that's a good idea or a bad idea but a lot of Dom Hain has been overshadowed by the Morphan builds because you could put a lot of. I'm going to jump to it actually. Morphan is the Soul Magic Adepts ability where your Soul Renders get to add three to the number of slain models they return back to your Namardi units. And right now, Namardi Reavers are very, very good. And they're never charging into combat anyway, unless things are desperate. So, you know, it's one of those things where I probably want a block or two of 20 to 30 archers and then a few tens of thralls to really be more screens. And... Again, in talking about taking these large blocks of infantry, whether they're the archers or the swordsmen, for all intents and purposes, um, I'm trying to regenerate as many as I can. And each soul render only affects one unit, so I want to take a couple soul renders to follow my larger blocks, whether they're of thralls or reavers. And I would rather be in Morphan, because... Again, you can't double up the ability. It says so in the text. So if I wanted 
to go for a big thrall push, I might not care so much about the charge and then the fighting later of the thralls if I run out of thralls. And then that also puts me into wanting to take a turtle for what is effectively an army-wide plus one to save because you take the bigger aura on the turtle to buff your Namardi. And... Because I, I, I'm currently in a tournament playing a list that is very archer heavy. And it's very much uh, a very aggressive list where I don't have the healing. And I'm playing it in Nautilar. So Nautilar is my favorite sub-faction. I did not make the list. This isn't my build. This is someone else's build that I'm playing as a... I'm a sub in a tournament or a team tournament. Uh, because I can play a few different lists in there. So it's like there's eight lists. It's a cool format. Um, eight lists. There's six of us players, and there's a band phase to see like what lists get through, and it it's really cool. Um, and the list I'm playing is based in Nautilar because I like what it does to the turtle, which is give uh, my turtles a monstrous rampage, where um, it says you can carry out this monstrous rampage. Uh, with a friendly Nautilar Leviathan, a.k.a. the turtle, a.k.a. Shelly Baby Girl, uh, instead of doing a normal monstrous rampage, you can carry out. So if you do, change the rend characteristic of the Leviathan's massive side fins and crushing jaws to minus three rend. So the reason you'd always do this with your turtle is if you're going to roar somebody, you're still going to be negative one rend. And if you fail the roar, what happens, right? They're going to get all out defense off. And then your neg one rend on your stuff goes to zero for the fins. With this, even if they all out defense, you still have two extra ren to cut through something. Which will still turn, what, a, a three up save into a five up? I'll take it. Instead of maybe, you know, keeping it at a four up save to a... And then that gets put back up to a four up. You know, it's it, it's weird math, but I like I'd rather take the negative three rend on stuff. Um, it's great for clearing out hordes of things with the fins. Um, but then there's the question of if I have these hordes of archers, how do I play it? So because I'm I'm selling out for my turtle in a sense. When I say I'm selling out, I'm just using a term for me where I'm putting a lot of my eggs in the turtle basket. And that is my main melee threat. And then I have two big blocks of archers that I need to have things happen with. Um, and I have ways to heal my guys, especially if I get a double turn, because I still have a soul render in there. Um... But the question then becomes, and why this was asked as a viewer topic, when does the benefits of a sub-faction make a really, really strong list just not as good? Uh, like, for me, Nautilar, I don't think you'd ever want to go two turtles unless you're having a fun game, because that's a thousand points of your army right there. Um, but I have a Nautilar list that I like for personally for doing singles events with, where I bring some sharks, you know, I bring a 20 block of archers, and I layer my stuff to be an anti-shooting army and play into deep constraints with that. So what I mean there is deep can have a rule where you have to shoot the nearest deep can model that you can see. You can always shoot allies, but you have to shoot the nearest model in the deep can army. If the allies are in front, you have to shoot the allies. Um, which is why I layer my screens and don't try to do some of these net lists where it's, you know, two units of 30 thralls and send them out because someone did the math hammer and it's like a bajillion damage. Which is great. You kill one thing and then by then you've taken so many losses if you're not in like a more fan. Because you're like, yeah, I wanted to you know, kill a thing, charge, and try to kill another thing. Cool, maybe you make that charge, maybe you don't. But you're taking so much damage just to even try to get into combat, and people are still taking horde-clearing magic spells that ignore the deepkin shooting. I don't know 
that that's viable in the long term against some things that if you still are in a magic heavy meta if you're in a shooting heavy meta yeah go right ahead that is an amazing build but this is the argument and it comes down to how you're comfortable playing the army like for me like if i'm running a bunch of of thralls i would prefer to be in more fan because i'm using it as a war of attrition right um I like a mixed arms approach in Nautilar because I didn't even mention Iron Rack, the the poster boy child faction um, of the Deepkin, where it it gives you um, I don't even know what it gives you. That's how little I've thought about it. Um, Iron Rack, the last one is Legacy of Glory. You can carry out this heroic action with a friendly Achillean hero. Instead of any other heroic action, if you do pick one friendly Iron Rack, Achillean unit, wholly within 12 of this hero, until the end of that turn, you can choose for that unit to be affected by either Flood Tide or Ebb Tide, which is the run and charge or retreat and charge from the Tides of Death table, in addition to any other abilities on the Tides of Death table that they are affected by. So that's like, if you want to run a lot of eels... And then some sharks, or if you want to like run and charge your turtle, um, that is a great sub faction. I would love offensive or defensive eels with iron rack. You know, I I, I got six defensive eels just staring at me from my shelf right now, um, because they've fallen out of how I like to play deepkin for competitive sake, but they're still really good. And when it comes to these netlists, the reason why. I am kind of anti-netlist and even have this channel is I want to empower you, the player, to be able to make your own choices based on and find out like what is your play style? You know, do you like the running and charging and being aggressive and all up in there? Of like say an iron jaws, but you want to try it with Deepkin. You go iron rack and then you go with the offensive eels. And then that's your play style, you know? Does an Iron Rack list work in other sub-factions, though? It might not. You know, and then you get into the argument of, do you go not a lot for the turtle buff to make it worth it in a, in a Namarty infantry heavy list? Do you go Dom Hain to supercharge your infantry, basically? For... Cause it, because they have a cool thing for um, for uh, redeploy, but you're really there for the charge mechanic, so that's the only thing I'm going to talk about. And then you're like, oh, does Morphan's healing give me enough sustainability for my army that I can be effective and last until ra battle round three where I get my always strikes first ability now? And the answer is going to be to this whole thing with these Deepkin sub-factions, as I am moving my green screen behind me, I apologize for that. The answer to the question is, it depends on you, the player. You know, what do you feel comfortable with? Do you want to plink away at people with archers and regenerate them and try to stay out of combat? Maybe Morphan is a little bit better for you. You know, do you want to be like me and you love Nautilar and you feel like the turtle being at 500 points isn't worth it unless you have the extra rend? Then go Nautilar. You know, do you do you want to run a bunch of sharks? Do you go Futan where they've got the cool shark formation? I think I didn't mention Futan. Oh, wow. I love Futan. Uh, I love a bloodthirsty shiver for the exploding hits on a shark. Or do you want, in that same breath, their Achillean units? Do you want your Achillean king to be able to send units of sharks off like like seeker missiles to go and run and charge and nail certain targets for you in combat? You know, and that and that's really what it comes down to is what do you, the player, the student here, want to do? Um, and I'm rambling a bit. So, you know, if we want concrete answers, I like my mixed arms list in Nautilar because I like taking my turtle. Not a lot of people like taking the turtle. If you feel like you really value Namarty Thralls 
charging and doing a lot of extra damage, go Dom Hain. If you're going for an eel spam list, Iron Rack is probably still the best thing for you. If you are worried because of the games you're playing against certain armies that you need the healing, specifically because a lot of people are bringing magic to get around our anti-shooting rule, and you need to regenerate the troops, go Marfan. You know, if you like sharks, Futan's always great. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to class today. Um, as your professor, really thank you. That means a lot. Um, and again, we do this for you to help y'all get better at the game. You know, feel free to go in the comments and ask me questions. I will answer them in the chat if I can. If you know, if it's longer than a couple sentence answer, I'll make a video about it. You know, thank you for watching. And I'd like to say at the end of all of our videos, class dismissed. Bye.